Thanks. Jaya Radha Madhava All glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Ranga. Okay, before we begin, I want to broach a subject. I was hoping Balon would be here, but we can uh, fill him in later. Uh, I travel to a few temples, and every temple where I travel, they say the English to the Guru Puja song before we sing. And I'm thinking we should do that here. It would be much smoother transition at the end. We just go right into Dhammadarashtika. And we do it for Tulsi Puja. And what do you think? What is your feeling about that? Or Jandranana Prabhu? Okay, it's all nectar. That's, that was, I'll take that as a yes. You won't object? No one will object? Okay. I don't know how it happened that they do it after here, but everywhere else in the world they do it before. So, what do you think, Balna? What's that? To, to say the English to the Guru Puja song before we sing the song, rather than after. Yeah. Every other temple, if you go to L.A., you go to Toronto. You you go say it before? Yeah, everyone says it before. Yeah, because this is the only temple maybe you've ever noticed it. So, uh, we'll try. I don't think there's anyone else to make a decision. If you're, if you're on board, Rajendranandan is on board. And uh, Any objections? Past. Okay. Narayanam Namaskritya. Narayanam Namaskritya. Narayanam Devim Sarasutim Vyasam. Devim Sarasutim Vyasam. Tato Jai Mudiri. 
Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashta Praesha Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Yuttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki By regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam, by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil. And loving devotion to the Supreme Lord, who is glorified in transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On this 31st day of October 2018 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Canto 4, the creation of the fourth order. Chapter 7, the sacrifice performed by Daksha. Text number 43. Now, just a warning, this is another unusual meter, so watch out. Not as difficult as the other one, but... Okay. Gandharva Uchuhu Ang Shang Shasti Deva Maricha Deya Ete Ang Shang Shasti Deva Maricha Deya Ete Brahmendra Dya Deva Ganarudra Paroga Brahmendra Dya Deva Ganarudra Paroga Krida Bandham Vishamidam Yasava Bhuman Krida Bandham Vishamidam Yasava Bhuman Tasmai Nityam Nata Namaste Karabama Tasmai Nityam Nata Namaste Karabama Gandhava Uchuhu Gandhava Uchuhu Ang Shang Shaste Deva Maricha Daya Ete Ang Shang Shaste Deva Maricha Daya Ete Brahmendra Dya Deva Ganarudha Paroga Krida bhandam vishamidam yasya vibhuman Krida bhandam vishamidam yasya vibhuman Tasmai nityam nata namaste karabama Tasmai nityam nata namaste karabama Please chant. Gandhava uchuhu Aung shang shaste deva madhichya daya ete Vam indra dhyā deva gana rūdhra parogā Krīdhā bhāndham viṣṣam idam yasya vabhūman Tasmai nityam nāt namaste khanabāma Kandāvā uchuhu Aung Shang Shaste Deva Maricha Daya Ete Brahmendra Dya Deva Gana Rundha Paroga Krida Bhandham Vishamidam Yasya Vibhuman Tasmai Nityam Nath Namaste Karavama Gandhava Uchuhu Aung Shang Shaste Deva Maricha Daya Ete Brahmendra Dya Deva Gana Rudra Paroga Krida Bhandham Vishamidam Yasya Vabhuman Tasmai nityam nata namaste karabama. One more. 
ओम शाम शास्ते देव मरीचाधिये ब्रह्म इंद्राजा देव गनारुंध परोगा क्रीडा बांधम विश्वमिदम यस्य वबुमन तस्मानित्यम् नात नमस्ते करवामो गंधवा the Gandavas Uchuhu said Angsha Angsha Parts and parcels of your body Te your Deva Dear Lord Marichi Adayaha Marichi and the great sages Ete These Brahma Indra Adyaha Headed by Brahma and Indra, Devaganaha, the demigods, Rudra Purogaha, having Lord Shiva as the chief, Krida Bandham, a plaything, Vishram, the whole creation, Idam, this, Yasya, of whom, the Bhuman, the Supreme Almighty Great, Tasmai, unto Him, Nityam, always, Nata, O Lord, Namaha, respectful obeisances, Te, unto You, Karavama, we offer. Translation. The Gandharvas said, Dear Lord, all the demigods, including Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, Indra, and Marichi, and the great sages, are all only differentiated parts and parcels of your body. You are the supreme almighty great. The whole creation is just like a plaything for you. We always accept you as the supreme personality of Godhead, and we offer our respectful obeisances unto you. So they're offering obeisances to Vishnu, who has now appeared in the sacrificial arena. Purport. In the Brahma Samhita, it is said that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There may be many gods, from Brahma, Lord Shiva, Indra, and Chandra, down to the rulers of the lower planetary systems, the presidents, ministers, chairmen, and kings. In fact, anyone can think that he is God. That is the false, puffed-up conviction of material life. Actually, Vishnu is the Supreme Lord, but there is even one above Vishnu, for Vishnu is also the plenary portion of a part of Krishna. In this verse, this is referred to by the word Angshangshaha, which refers to a part and parcel of a part and parcel. There are similar verses in the Chaitanya Charitamrita which indicate that the Supreme Lord's parts and parcels and again expand to other parts and parcels. As described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there are many manifestations of Vishnu and many manifestations of living entities. Vishnu manifestations are called svangsha, partial manifestations, and the living entities are called vibhinangsha. The demigods, like Brahma and Indra, have been promoted to such exalted positions by pious activities and austerities. But actually, Vishnu, or Krishna, is the master of everyone. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said, Ekale Ishvara Krishna ar sabha this means that Krishna alone is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and all others, even the Vishnu Tattva and certainly the living entities, are his servitors. All right, I'm just going to mark this for investigation. Baladev is the immediate expansion of Krishna. He also engages in the service of Krishna, and certainly the ordinary living entities are serving. Everyone is created constitutionally for serving Krishna. Here the Gandharvas acknowledge that although the demigods may represent themselves as the supreme, actually they are not supreme. Real supremacy belongs to Krishna. Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam is the statement of Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna is the only supreme lord. Worship of Krishna alone, therefore, includes worship of all the parts and parcels, just as watering the root of a tree also waters all the branches, twigs, leaves, and flowers. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshura Unmilatam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha 
I was born in darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torch light of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So this is the difference between the demigods and the demons. When the demigods see Vishnu or feel his presence, they glorify him and they recognize their own position. Uh, sometimes we find demigods such as Indra kind of deviating a little bit from that and, and forgetting his position and then Krishna has to bring him back. But eventually we find Indra, he totally surrenders, he's so sorry, he offers prayers, unlike the demons who really are just are, cannot abide that there's someone supreme above them and therefore they, the big ones are actually killed personally by Krishna. Uh, so that mentality of uh, deference and surrender to the Lord is what differentiates the Suras from the Asuras. And uh, then there's a whole uh, millions and trillions and countless quadrillions of living entities who are just uh, unaware unaware of, of, of God or the demigods or anything. They're just aware of their own situation in the material world. And just think of lower animals and insects and everything. Very, very compromised and constricted view of the world, basically just eating and sleeping and fearing and mating, you know, which is very uh, rudimentary kind of living. But that's the, that's the destination not the ultimate destination, but, but the pre preliminary de destination of those who re uh, reject their actual identity and try to become lords of this material world. And this is the, the roiling ocean of living beings that we're living in right now. But because we're human beings, we have the opportunity to hear the, the Srimad Bhagavatam and actually understand our position and what's going on in the world. So this, this uh, idea of the, the Lord expanding is prominent here and because uh, the first word, Prabhupada, ang, ang shang shang shas, means a part of a part. Uh, as Prabhupada said, parts and parcels of your body. And Prabhupada is recalling near the beginning of the CC where you find a description of Nityananda, who is Balaram. But he's got, oh, and then he expands as Mahavishnu, God Chira. So you, eventually you get ang shang 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 shas, you remember the verse, at the beginning of the, the CC, you look it up. So that's uh, the, part, the, the part of the part of the part. And, but there's two categories there. One is the svangshas, one is the vibhinangsha. Vibhina means separated. That's a, completely separated, vibhina. So that's us. We, are, we have Krishna's qualities in very minute degree, but we can manifest, we have 50 max. You know, and even those, we, we don't really manifest very much, but the pure devotees can manifest them to the degree that a human being can do so. But then there's five qualities which no living entity can possess. But uh, great uh, beings like Shiva, who's not a living entity, is not Vishnu, manifest. It says, Atta pancha gunayesha ang shena gidisharasu sada swarupa sampradak sarva gyo nitya nutanak satchadananda sandranga sarva siddhina shevita. So these five are there in Shiva, but can't be there in the living entities. Sadasvarupa means always situated in his constitutional position. Shiva doesn't fall into Maya, although he was ruled a little bit by Mohini Murti, but that was a special situation. But he's Sadasvarupa, uh, Sarvagya. Now, interestingly enough, I, did, I investigated this, and in Prabhupada's translation there in the CC, because these qualities are listed in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhulila, uh, he makes the point. The, the, there's the, these are uh, Krishna. The, the uh, Shiva has them in a partial quality. He doesn't have these qualities in the same degree that Krishna has. So he's sarvagya, which means omniscient, but he's not omniscient in the same degree that Krishna is. It's just like perfect, more perfect, most perfect. In English, if you do that in your eighth grade paper, you say no, you can't have either. Either you're perfect or you're not perfect. It's one of these English words that uh, is supposed to not be able to be uh, degrees of perfection. <laughs> but Prabhupada blew that away, you know. <laughs> There's perfect, more perfect. Uh, Krishna's uh, pastimes in Dwarka are perfect. Those in Mathura are more perfect. But in, Golok, in Vrindavan, most perfect like that. So uh, it's like that with these qualities of Shiva. Sarvagyal, Nityanutanak, ever fresh, ever useful. He never ages, you know. 
every every uh, 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 living entity uh, in the, in the, as the atma, uh, they age, the body ages eventually. Uh, such as Ananda Sandranga, his, his limbs are concentrated such as Ananda. So, such as Ananda, Sarva Siddhi Nishavata, and he has all the mystic powers that manifest like that. So that's Shiva, but Krishna is even, uh, but Vish, the Vishnu forms have an additional five that even Shiva doesn't have. Atochanda Guna Pancha Ye Lakshmi Shari Varjana Avachincha Mahashakti Koti Brahman Vigraha Avataravali Vijam Hatati Katidayaka Atmana Magana Karshi Jame Krishna Kilabhuta. So these five qualities are present in the Vishnu forms, but even more perfectly and, and, and uh, voluminously in Krishna. So first is uh, avataravali bijam, that the, the, the avatars who appear in this material world come through. This is especially mentioning like Jirodaksha Vishnu and Gabadaksha Vishnu. Uh, they come through these uh, uh, Vishnu forms. And this is why Prabhupada explained when Krishna appeared in the dungeon of Kamsa, he first appeared as Vishnu, just to remind, you know, and to, remind, to uh, reveal to Devaki and Vasudeva that this is actually the Lord appearing. So, Hatari uh, whoever, whoever they kill is liberated. Hatari Gatidayaka, bestow the, the goal of life upon those who they kill. Atmanamagana Karshi, they uh, attract even the Atmaramas. You know, the Atmaramas are not attracted to any demigod, no matter how powerful. But when it comes to Vishnu, they will be attracted. You know, because there's so qualities on them. Uh, so the uh, what is what is the fight? Atochan uh, guna ye lakshmi shayi avachinja mahashakti. So filled with all kinds of amazing potencies. This is mentioned in the uh, Brahma Samhita. Uh, what is it? Yekar naan avajale bhajadisme yoga nidra mananda jagadannam saramakur adhara shaktim avalami param samuni. He has all of these shaktis by which he manifests the creation. You know, this is not present in the other, in, in even Shiva. Uh, so it says, uh, uh, let's see, So then there's, four, there's five unique qualities, four unique qualities that only Krishna has. Sarva Bhuta Chamatkara Lila Kalolavardi Atulya Manara Prema Mandita Priya Mandala Chidigan Manasarka Shim Hulali Kalakujita Asamanodva, Rupa, Shi, Vismapada, Tadasada. And these expand and are manifest in the highest realm, especially Gokula in, in Goloka Mandala. So, Sarva Bhuta Chamatkara, Lila Kalola Varadi. He's an ocean full of these waves of Lila that astound every, everyone, everyone who perceives them, who hears about them. Atulya uh, Marala Prema Mandita Priya Mandala. This refers to the, especially the gopis. Atulya Marala Prema. Uh, and that those endowed with unequaled un, uh, 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 conjugal ras, this Madhura Lila, Madhura ras, Atula Madhura Prema Mandita Priya Mandala. He's decorated, uh, is surrounded by, by all these uh, loving gopis, especially in the rasa dance. Only Vishnu doesn't have rasa dance. And then uh, the flute, Chitigan Manasarka, she attracting everyone's mind in the three worlds. And Asama Nordva Rupa Shri Vismapada Tadat. He astounds moving and non moving living entities with his unequaled and unsurpassed beauty and opulence. So, those are the four, four unique uh, Krishna. And therefore, it could be Krishna, but he has all of these uh, 64 qualities. And he is uh, Ekala Ishwara Krishna, all the others. And you read this especially in the CC where you have uh, Advaita Acharya and Nityananda, who are after all Balaram. And and or, or uh, and uh, Mahavishnu, uh, Mahavishnu and Balaram respectively, they are just dying to serve Lord Chaitanya. Advaita Acharya couldn't stand it that he that Lord Chaitanya was showing him respect. He wanted to be the humble servant. He's Mahavishnu. He's right? <laughs> so he preached some Maya about philosophy, so that Lord Chaitanya would chastise him and he'd be in his proper position. What to speak of Lord Nityananda, who? <laughs> Uh, even wanted to defy Lord, Lord Chaitanya's orders and stay in Jagannath Puri, you know, just so he could be with him and serve him all the time. And said, "No, if you really want to serve me, you have to go to Bengal and preach." So he, he did that. So this, so this is uh, you find that uh, even Krishna, he wants to experience the nectar of serving Krishna, and that's why he comes as Lord Chaitanya. 
That's where the, the real uh, ultimate ecstasy lies. So, uh, Prabhupada, but here, here, this is kind of an official, you know, this is, this is a, the, the whole, if you look at the whole pastime that we've been seeing here, versus all of this glorification of Shiva, the whole, the whole pastime developed was because Shiva was disrespected, right, from, by, by Daksha. He completely had, had become covered over by his sense of superiority because he's, uh, Shiva is his son-in-law. So he had to be brought to, to heal, so to speak. So after that's all going on, and then Brahma goes in order to make peace, he brings all the demigods with him, and they glorify Shiva. And then Vishnu appears. Now everybody's now in their right position. Brahma's bowing down, and he's offering prayers, and then we'll have a series of prayers here. And I just wanted to call attention to this, you know, the wonderful quality of the, of the, the poetry here in the Sanskrit, you know, because we don't speak the language. But the last two verses... These are, these are very rare in, in, in the Bhagavatam, these particular meters. This one here, you practically don't see anywhere, even in the writings of the Goswamis. The meter, the chanda. It, it, it's, it's the arrangement of the, of the long and short syllables that forms the chanda. And this, this angshang shaste deva madhichadya ete, it's a very rare, you don't, you don't find it. But it's a, even if you don't know the meaning, it's, it's pleasing to the mind. And the previous one was called Shikarini. It's very often used by the Goswamis, yesterday's, which everyone had trouble chanting. But uh, the, 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 the refinement of this language, and the, you know, the, this is worthy of, of the, you know, describing the Supreme Personality of God. This is one of the reasons. This is why it says, Nagamakal Bhattadoa Gardetam Balam Shukamakada Metadrava Samyutam. That having been touched by the lips of Shukadev with his poetic ability, you know, this is, uh, is, is sweetest of the sweet, the ripened fruit, and we should all drink it. So Prabhupada refers to a verse near the end here. Uh, he refers to several verses. But at the very end, uh, by the way, this Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam, this is like a Paribhasa Sutra, right? This is like the basis of everything. Uh, sometimes, you know, you could, it's, it's good to just like concentrate. What is this movement based on, you know? Well, it's based on, uh, it, the first thing is that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the whole theme of the Lago Bhagavatamrita. Rupa Goswami wrote that just to, And if you look at Prabhupada's preaching, this is what he was, this flag that he was writing, you know, he was waving, is that there is a God, and his name is Krishna, and now you learn who Krishna is, why he's God, you know, and why we're his eternal servants. You know, that itself was, was practically the great battle that he had to win. So the statement here, Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam. So it begins, Ete Changsa, here's the word Changsa, Ete Changsa Kala Pungsa Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam. In this chapter three of the first canto, he's just been listing all different avatars, mostly what we call Leela avatars, but there's some in there who are like uh, Shakti Vesh, I think he lists even the, uh, the four Kumars are listed in there. Um, but whoever they may be, whether they're plenary or... Pl plenary basically means full, uh, like Ramchandra. He has Krishna's... He's, he's Krishna. He has his power, but he doesn't manifest all of them. That's the difference. But the living entities, they may be empowered but they, to a certain degree, but they don't have all of Krishna's powers. But whether they're exalted living entities, uh, anxious, or kala. They're all either expansions, plenary or partial expansions of Krishna, who is Bhagavan himself. I remember when uh, I was living in Brooklyn, uh, remember they used to have these things called letterhead? When they used to send actual physical letters? So, <laughs> so the letterhead, we had International Science of Krishna Consciousness, you know, what was the, I forget the address now, uh, something Henry Street, you know, and, and then there was that phrase at the top, uh, Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam. This was kind of a theme, and maybe Prabhupada put it on some of his letters, just to remind us. And then comes this, this, this uh, reference here, citation, of uh, a really important verse about watering the root or feeding the stomach and therefore pleasing Krishna. This is Narada Muni speaking, I, I think. Yata taro mula nishe charena tripyanti tatskanda bhujo pashaka so, just as watering the root of a tree 
then all of the branch, all of the branches and the uh, fruits and flowers become nicely watered. Right? Everyone, anyone who works uh, with uh, agriculture knows that. Uh, or is feeding the stomach, then the whole body becomes nourished. Similarly, by serving Krishna, who's the root of everything, all the demigods become pleased and satisfied. And when the demigods are satisfied with you, then your material life is, is peaceful and prosperous. That's the whole idea, is that we don't have to, you know, worship Indra. That's what the whole theme of this yatra is, right? Govardhan Leela. <laughs> Krishna wanted to convince him. His, uh, his, his father and the, the elders, they were simply preparing for the traditional sacrifice they'd always perform. It's a traditional Vedic community. But Krishna is saying, no, don't worship Indra. You don't have to worship Indra. Just worship Govardhan, you know, and, and, and worship the cows and so forth, and we'll be fine. And uh, in so doing, they're actually worshiping him, both because the hill itself is a manifestation of Krishna and because they're following his order. So, you know, the story, Indra, Indra lost it because he go, it goes to his head. He's Indra. means the senses are very powerful. And so, uh, to show Krishna's supremacy, he, you know, he sent this horrible rain. I mean, now we have these, these storms blowing up these days, which are out of the ordinary. Remember last year with Houston? <laughs> it was just like that, right? The big, big storm comes and it just stops and pours down an enormous amount of rain. The damage was, I was just reading, like $130 billion or something like that. You know, it's disastrous. So Indra thought he was going to do that. I mean, it was really quite dangerous because all the cows would have drowned, all the people would have drowned. But he completely lost it. You know, so Krishna brought him low by you know, showing that. So that's the idea, is that we don't have to worship anyone else. That's what real faith is. That's, that's what Lord Chaitanya defines as faith. Shraddha shabde, vishras kohe, sudridha, nishchoy, krishne bhakti, krishne bhakti koile, sarvakaro kutahoi. So it's worth memorizing this definition of faith, very important. So uh, sh this word shabde, right in Bengali, is kind of an idiom, means it's defined as, right? Shraddha shabde, vishras kohe, sudridha nishchoy. Firm, unbreakable conviction, sudridha nishchoy, vishvas, that what? Do you know? Bhakta Zak? Who can say? No, not exactly. What is it? More or less, yeah. That just by practicing Krishna consciousness, not worshipping anyone else, not diverting your attention, just doing your things, and that means doing your material things in Krishna consciousness too, like in the Bhagavad Gita. All my aspirations will be f fulfilled. I don't have to do a little for Krishna, a little for Maya, you know, worship this God, this Goddess, this God, this Goddess, and also, you know, Lakshmi Narayan. That's an uh, offense to the Holy Name, second offense. So that's what this movement is all about, is a one-pointed fixation on Krishna and understanding the demigods as his servants, exalted servants, and in this way, worshipping them. Shiva is more happy when you worship Krishna than when you worship him for some material thing. When we recognize him as, as the uh, greatest Vaishnav, right? Vaishnavanam Yata Shambhu, he's, he's more pleased than if you're going to worship him for some material thing, you know. Like Vik Vikasra, you know, this is like the extreme example. He, he, he worshipped, he worshipped, he threatened to cut his head off. Shiva showed him some mercy, gave him the boon, and then it caused all this trouble. So, uh, we can... Uh, I remember years and years ago, maybe Raj, you remember this. I think you may have been the president at that time. Where they had, it was Shiva Ratri. I used to do the evening, the, the Shayana Arati, the Sandhya Arati. So I opened the curtain and it's Shiva Ratri. And here's our old friend, Dr. Devuri. And he, he seemed to be dressed up as, as Javasa Muni, I'm not sure. But he was, <laughs> he had these robes on and the hair, you know. And they had, they had the uh, Shiva Linga, a Shiva Linga, a big one right up there where the fountain is, or next to the fountain. And they were f offering every, all, all kinds of offerings to, directly to the Shiva Linga. And he was standing there, sh I, I, you know, I don't know what he was chanting, but, he, I, but the, whole, the, the whole mood was worship Shiva and we use the temple of Vishnu for it. So this is not right. But I couldn't do anything. I was in the middle of the arti. So I said, all right, next year I'll conduct it, you know. So we read from the fourth canto, the song of Shiva, you know, where he prays that the Lord will manifest to him. 
and we sang, uh, what is it, Bolo Krishna, but bo, Chatu, uh, you know, there's, a, there's kind of a thing that we don't sing anymore. In Panchamukhi, you know, it's, it's a Hare Krishna Kirtan and describing how Brahma and Shiva are also chanting the Hare Krishna mantra within the Kirtan. So I made it very clear in other passages from Prabhupada's books we're reading. And if you want to offer the Shiva Linga, fine. You, you take the prasadam and then you give the Shiva Linga the remnants. And this is the, the proper way of honoring the Shiva Linga. So it's... At least what? At least in Christian temple. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that was... But, but you can see there's a lot of misconceptions, you know, amongst uh, immigrants. You know, they, they raise in a certain way. They, and it's almost... You can, this is one of the reasons Prabhupada left India. Because there was so much, you know, wrong information that people were absolutely sure was true. They learned it from childhood about the gods, about Krishna, you know. So he came to a place where they, nobody knew anything about anything. And if he found some that were re really ready to listen to him, they could be actually infused with the actual thing and, and develop faith, real faith in Krishna alone. And, that's what, and then he went back to India. And now in India, his movement is like ten times bigger than anyone else. Very uh, intelligent. I wanted to leave a little time for reading a little more from the Gopal Champu about Dhamma Lila. Am I authorized? Okay. Unless there's some urgent comment on these points. Tomorrow we'll hear about from the Vidyadaras. Okay, I'm looking at All right, so here we go. This is from the first half of the uh, Gopal Champu. And I, I discovered something very interesting. <laughs> There's also a description of Krishna's later leader, but it takes place in the context of, of Vrindavan. The, the, the poets are describing Krishna's later leader to Krishna himself and the gopas and gopis in the, these evening sessions. They're hearing Krishna Kata. But they're so exaltedly pure that when they hear how Krishna was taken to, to uh, Mathura from Vrindavan by Akura, the gopis are going into you know, great anxiety and everything, and, and they have to assure them, this is only stories, it's not true now. You know, see, here's Krishna right here. <laughs> this is the sensitivity. So the whole thing takes place in Vrindavan, but they're telling the pastimes for, for both... Uh, mature, you know, uh, Vrindavan, Mathura, and Varka Leela. Okay, so I think this is where we were. Let me just confirm here. I can, uh, I'm going to start. Yeah, okay. So, Mother Yashoda has put the milk in order. The problem of the boiling milk solved, Mother Yashoda, still unaware of all that had happened, began to search for her small son. Although she did not find him, she could understand what he had done. Filled with both delight and wrath, she burst into laughter. At first, Mother Yashoda was worried and restless. Then, remaining invisible, Goddess Yogamaya spoke some words from the sky, words informing Yashoda of Krishna's actions. Those words were the cause of Mother Yashoda's laughter. Yogamaya said, Thirsting for honey, the black bee that is your little boy broke open one lotus bud, looked inside, saw what little honey was within, trickle away, became dissatisfied, approached another lotus flower, and there found the honey he sought. So, his little, so the, when he broke the pot th that she was churning from, all of the, the butter and everything and milk was wasted, so he didn't get any. So, so to find some, he went into the storerooms and found one of the pots hanging and poked it and, and got the bulk of the That's what he's describing. Then the yoga is still speaking. You quieted the boiling milk in that, in, in, that your skill is, in that your skill is seen. If you can quiet your little boy's wrath, then great praise will be placed upon you. Hearing these words and smiling and seeing small Krishna's footprints near where he broke the pot, Mother Yashoda unbolted the door and continued searching for her son. Entering the house, seeing the results of her son's peerless mischief, and following the trail he left, Mother Yashoda finally found her restless-eyed son. So, so Krishna's thinking now. I stole many things, Krishna's thinking. Mother, mother will find me. How will I be able to look her in the eye? Thinking in this way, small boy Krishna, maybe the, I don't know what the Sanskrit is, maybe Shishu. Shishu means a little child. Small boy Krishna, this is Kushikrata's phrase. Again and again, restlessly moved his eyes, eyes so gracefully placed between his graceful ears. Looking down and seeing her restless-eyed son hiding behind a grinding mortar and feeding ghee to a monkey, 
Mother Yashoda smiled with wonder. Now having found the thief that was her son, Mother Yashoda ran to grasp him. The people of the world say, a thief's eyes move restlessly, thus he seems to have a hundred eyes. The master that catches the thief has but two eyes, eyes graced with smiles. When the bold monkey had eaten his fill of fresh butter, small boy Krishna suddenly saw his mother, a stick tucked into her sash. Krishna quickly, Krishna quickly climbed a tree branch. Bursting into tears and laughter, Krishna quickly fled. A rain of flowers falling from her braided hair, Mother Yashoda called to him, Where are you going, O best of thieves? Running, Mother Yashoda tried to catch her fleeing son, but she couldn't. He ran like a baby rain cloud carried by the wind in the sky pathway where all the clouds run. Thinking, Mother will not follow me to the village gate, small Krishna ran there. Aware that Krishna was running to that secluded place, Mother Yashoda pursued him. Little Krishna fled. As long as he did not look behind him, his mother couldn't catch him. When he fearfully looked behind, she suddenly grabbed him with her hand. Krishna's eyes bore witness to his mother's presence. Her wrath made him weep. Trembling came to his graceful, handsome form. He didn't wipe the ghee from his limbs. When Mother Yashoda forcefully placed his face before hers, little Krishna tried to hide the ghee that anointed his limbs. I'm not sure. I'm, I, I can't swear for this translation. But anyway, what we got. Mother Yashoda said, My Lord, if you wish to rob from, me, from my house, then you must see this stick I hold in my hand. Suddenly aware of the fear that filled her son's lordless eyes, Frederick's Queen Yashoda dropped the stick from her hand. Don't, don't, thief, thief. In this way, smiling Yashoda debated with her son. <laughs> so he's saying, don't, don't, beat me. And he's saying, thief, thief. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Aha, she says, you are the king of thieves. If I am a thief, then all of my father's dynasty are thieves. In this way, Mother Yashoda debated with her butter thief son. How was the pot of yogurt broken? It was broken by the supreme controller's stick. Who gave ghee to a monkey? He who created the monkey gave the ghee. <laughs> I think you yourself tasted this ghee fit for jagya. You licked up this fresh butter. As she rebuked her son, little robber son, Yashoda felt her heart melt with love for him. Smiling with anger, Mother Yashoda then said, Become free of your pride. Tell me your secret. Questioned in this way by his mother, Yashoda's small son, Krishna, tears filling his eyes, said, When you hurried away to fix the milk, your anklets struck the yogurt pot and it broke open. How am I at fault? Sent by the monkey king, a monkey entered the house to steal something. As, as he was taking away the ghee, I grabbed him to stop him. How am I at fault? Seeing your raised stick, I fled like a thief. For no reason, you again and again wished to beat poor frightened me. Then, pretending to suddenly feel some remorse, Mother Yashoda said, O oh, best of elegant logicians, O oh, best of thieves, even though you were born in the best of human families, you still dearly love the monkeys. Indeed, you are very, like, very much like a monkey yourself. Yashoda's son Krishna then fearfully spoke these fear-inspiring words, Because of your actions, I will now enter the forest. There I will stay. Mother Yashoda then fearfully thought, Who knows? Perhaps the proud little boy will do it. To stop him, I should tie him up. All alone, without any help, it will be very difficult for me to keep this boy at home. Thinking in this way, Mother Yashoda openly said, Old thief whose graceful, restless eyes place on everyone a spell of enchantment. Don't think you can stop me. I'll tie you up. Then I'll hurry home. Then you may try to rob some other things, if you can. As Yashoda was about to tie him up, her enraged son, tears in his eyes, called out, Mother Rohini, Brother Balaram, where are you now? If you don't help me, this woman will tie me up. Please quickly come. <laughs> because they were very far away, neither Rohini nor Balaram heard Krishna's words, but some nearby women did hear. Gathering there, they spoke words criticizing little Krishna. To remind Yashoda of words they had said before, the women said, Now this thief has stolen from your house also. Remember they had complained. I was always thieving. Then they all laughed. Not hearing their words, Mother Yashoda, taking a ribbon from her hair and wishing to tie her small, uh, to teach her so, small son a lesson, at once tried to tie her small, small son's waist to the grinding mortar as Prajapati Daksha might have tied an animal's neck in Yajna. But Mother Yashoda's ribbon was too short by the measurement of two fingers. 
Taking another ribbon from her braids and tying it to the first, Yashoda saw that the combined ribbons were still too short by two fingers. Yashoda was very surprised. Many other ribbons were offered by the other women. Still, all the ribbons tied together were not long enough to reach the farther shore of the shoreless ocean of Krishna's small waist. Mother Yashoda saw that as a series of small clouds might be unable to completely encircle a faraway mountain peak, so all the tied together ribbons were always two fingers too short to encircle small Krishna's waist. Okay, a little more and then we'll stop. Watching all this and speaking many joking words, the ladies of Braja said, O oh, Queen of Braj, we told you that your son is a powerful magician. He makes even the famous robber Kapolaka tremble in fear. Gleefully enjoying what he violently took from others, your son now glistens with great splendor. To these words, Yashoda replied, What does this foolish little boy know? It is you who know about magic tricks. You are prejudiced against my son. Misinterpreting all he does, you mock him with joking words. Laughing, the ladies all said, Oh, noble Yashoda, noble Yashoda, we bow down before your feet. To you we solemnly affirm, we know nothing of bewildering magic tricks. In her heart, Yashoda thought, Bhagamuni spoke of this. This must be the work of the potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That potency stops me from tying up my son. My son doesn't know anything about magic powers to stop me. Thinking in this way, Yashoda became filled with feelings of maternal love for her son. Determined to teach her son what is right, she brought many churning ropes from the house. Even after all the ropes were tied together, she still could not encircle the waist of her little son. Vraja's queen could not tie up her son. She couldn't even touch the farthest shore of the waist of, he, of him whose powers are like a shoreless sea. She became covered with perspiration. The curly ringlets of her hair again and again covered her face. As again and again she struggled against the Yadu dynasty born Krishna's adamant refusal to be bound, again and again Yashoda met only defeat. When Yashoda was completely frustrated and agitated, little Krishna thought in his heart, let it be. When Krishna thought that, his waist was suddenly bound by the first of Mother Yashoda's ribbons. At that moment, Mother Yashoda saw that all the other ribbons and ropes were unneeded. Okay, so we'll pick that up next time I give class. Quite amazing, huh? All glories to Srila Prabhupada.